So based on can I retire at 55 with a million dollars, Robert is out of money at 70 years old. So you, can I retire at 55 with $1 million? Well, I have Robert. He's from the great state of North Carolina, and he's asking the question, hey, Drew, I'm 55 years old. I've saved a million dollars for retirement in my 401k, and I'm asking the question, can I retire? So that's what we're going to look at today on the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. We're going to look at a couple specific details in Robert's plan that I think will benefit you in your retirement planning and especially planning out your retirement income. Now, the first thing is Robert is 55 years old. All of his retirement savings are in his current 401k. He's worked for the same company for his entire career. So he's going to retire at 55. We need to use the rule of 55 because he's under the age of 59 and a half. If he takes his 401k and he rolls it into an IRA and he starts taking income out of it, he's going to pay a 10% penalty on top of the taxes he's already pulling out for retirement income. But if he leaves the 401k alone in his current employer and he leaves in the year he turns 55, he can use the rule of 55, which means he can take out retirement income without paying the 10% penalty. There's still taxes, but no penalty. Now for you, if you're wanting to use the rule of 55 in your retirement planning, make sure that it's your current 401k that you're going to be using for retirement income. Make sure that you leave your current job in the year you turn 55 or later and make sure that your plan administrator allows you to take income out of your 401k. All right, so let's get into Robert's plan here. So we've got Robert. He's 55 years and 10 months. His current salary is $108,000, but we're going to retire him because he wants to retire by the end of the year. Now, his Social Security at 67 is $2,600 per month. So if you take Social Security at 67, which is Robert's full retirement age, he's going to get 100% of his Social Security benefit or of his retirement benefit. Now, if he waits till 70 to take his Social Security, he's going to get 124% of his full retirement benefit. If he decides to take Social Security early, which 62 would be the first eligible age that Robert could take Social Security, he would get 70% of his full retirement benefit. Now, he can claim Social Security anywhere between age 62 and 70. And we're going to look at that in this scenario because Robert might actually need to work a little bit longer, claim Social Security early, something. So we're going to get into all that during this. Now, we don't have any pension benefits. In assets, like we talked about, Robert has a million dollars in his current 401k. So we're going to use the rule of 55 on his current 401k. He's got about $20,000 sitting in the bank. So that's his emergency fund that he has sitting in the bank currently. Now, Robert does own his home. It's $500,000 in value and he has a mortgage on it. So we've got a mortgage on his current home. And we're going to talk about that in expenses here in just a second. So if you look at this, He's got $1,026,000 in liquid net worth, a million six thousand, which is in his 401k, which we're going to use for retirement income. Now, the first thing that I like to look at, especially when we're doing projections for retirement, is the risk allocation. So for Robert, we have to do a risk assessment, which the software allows us to look to ask these specific questions. And the software will tell us, hey, by the answers that you gave to those questions, this is how your assets should be growth versus conservative or growth versus safe. So let's look at his risk assessment first. So the first question is what dollar amount would you like to keep in liquid accounts such as checking, savings, or money market accounts? These funds can be protected in the plan for use in the future. So for Robert, we're just going to leave $20,000 liquid. That's what he wants. That's what he wants in the bank, just $20,000. How many years can you let your assets grow before having to take a withdrawal? 
zero to two. He's going to have to start pulling out his retirement income right away because we're not to Social Security and he doesn't have, an, a, uh, doesn't have a pension. What statement best describes how you feel about saving and risk? So I do not want to see my principal amount decrease. I cannot afford a significant loss to principal. If my interest or rate of return stays ahead of inflation, I don't want exposure to risk. If I can make a moderate interest or rate of return on my investments, I can withstand some market fluctuations. So that's Robert's answer because he really has to earn a higher rate of interest and we have to keep that money in the market. So it can't be uber safe because he's got to earn a rate of return. A million dollars, we're going to get to his expenses, which are about $80,000. So 8% off of, or 80,000 off a million is 8%. So we've got to earn some interest. Now, what would you consider a reasonable rate of interest rate for this, a rate of return on your money? We're going to look at four to six. That's a reasonable rate of return in retirement. Now, listen, you might have years where you earn seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 percent. But when we're doing projections, we want to do four, five, and six percent. We don't want to overestimate. We also don't want to underestimate. The stock market has averaged eight percent with inflation for about 50 years. So we're going to go two percent behind the overall market just to be a little bit more conservative because we're using our assets for income. It's called risk capacity. How much risk can your portfolio take if you're withdrawing income without having significant decreases in the amount of assets that you've got? So we're gonna look at four to six for Robert. So we're gonna hit save and close on this, and this gives us his risk classification. So based on his answers, we want about 80% of this in low risk investment, so 810,000. We want about 195 in growth. So this is gonna be a balance, not necessarily 80, 20 fixed income to equity, you can still be conservative and investing in equities. It's just giving us an outline saying, hey, based on Robert's answers, based on how he needs to pull income out of this portfolio, he needs to make sure $810,000 doesn't fluctuate one-on-one -on -one with the market. We don't want it equally correlated with the S&P 500. So we're gonna go to portfolio weighted average. And we're going to give his investments a 6% rate of return. Now, the money in the bank is getting a zero, but the money in the 401k is going to earn 6%, meaning the investments are in the market and we're going to project a 6% rate of return. Now, his home is going to get a 1.5% increase and any kind of extra cash flows, which would be extra money left over, and any RMD proceeds or required minimum distribution proceeds that are left over after expenses are going to get a 6% rate of return as well. All right. So we've answered all of those questions. That's kind of the first part, the big foundation to all of this. So let's look at expenses because this is where it gets kind of tricky for Robert. So his current monthly expenses after tax, $3,833. So after tax, he needs $3,833 every month to go to the grocery store, to get gas, to go bowling, to do fun stuff. Okay, $3,833. So that's going to get an inflation rate of 3.24%. So we're going to put inflation of 3.24% on his food bill, on his grocery bill, on his gas bill, on anything else that he needs his money for. But Robert has some other expenses that are actually going to fall off at a certain time. So we don't want to add those to these expenses because these, these expenses are in perpetuity, meaning they're going to go on forever. At 95, we're going to have some expenses, but his mortgage is going to end right? His travel budget is going to end at some time, at some point. So we need to put some end dates on those. Now, that's where cash flows comes into play. So travel, he wants to travel starting in November of this year, and we're going to do this for 15 years. So November 2022 to November 2037, he wants $10,000 per year for that. So it's an annual outflow coming from his investments. He also has a mortgage, a $2,000 mortgage payment that's going to end in 2032. So we've got $24,000 per year fixed for the next 10 years. After that, that $2,000 falls off. So we don't have to keep calculating, calculating that into his expenses because after the year 2032, it goes away. The same with travel. 
after the year 2037, he's assuming that he's going to slow down and he's not going to need that $10,000 anymore. It doesn't mean it can't be reevaluated, right? We're going to reevaluate this plan year over year over year. But what it means is for the projections right now, we want to project out 15 years. Could be sooner, could be later. Obviously, health is a, is a big deal with this. So let's look at retirement for a minute. So here's what we got. We've got a million twenty-six in spendable assets. We've got five hundred thousand dollars in his house, so we have a net worth of one point five million dollars. Robert's fifty-five years old, so here's that ten thousand dollars coming out for travel. That's an annual expense, so you can see that coming out. Here's our expenses; they're going to go up every year. All right. Now, where is our mortgage? Where'd the mortgage go? Let's go back to cash flows for a minute. The mortgage is missing. Oh, I see. It's got to come out of here. So his mortgage is going to come out of his 401k because he doesn't have a salary anymore and it's going to go to pay the mortgage. All right. So let's go back to retirement. I thought that looked a little bit better than I thought. Okay. So here's what we got. So based on can I retire at 55 with a million dollars, Robert is out of money at 70 years old. So you can see this. Here's the mortgage. Here's his cash flow for travel, and here's his expenses. Okay, so you can see this million twenty six is just getting eaten away, eaten away, eaten away. Now he does kick on Social Security at sixty seven, so Social Security is never going to go away. So that's a single form of income. It's got inflation. It's got a cola protection on it, a cost of living adjustment. So it's going to increase with time, but basically doing what he wants to do, he's out of money at 70. Now he still has his house. It's paid off at this point at 70. He's got $627,000 in equity on his home. So essentially he could do a reverse mortgage. He could sell the house, maybe move into another house or rent. There's a lot of possibilities. But what concerns me about this is 15 years into this projection, he's out of cash. And so we need to go back and I need to go to Robert and say, okay, Robert, what do we need to adjust so that you can make this last longer? Do we want to adjust when we retire or do we want to adjust expenses? So for him, his first response was, let's adjust the travel budget and let's cut it in half. So Robert's single, it's easily flexible for him. So we go back to cash flows. Here's our travel budget. And let's drop the travel budget to $5,000 and hit save and close. So now we're going to spend $5,000 every year on travel. Doesn't mean we're not going to have fun, but we're going to spend $5,000 a year on travel instead of $10,000. We go back to retirement and it only gets them three years. Now we're at 73. So I go back to Robert and I say, okay, we changed the travel expense. We can't change your baseline expenses, that 3,833. That's, that's, that's your budget. You got to have those. And we can't change your mortgage unless you want to sell your house now and buy a smaller house. He doesn't want to do that. So now we got to go back to our date of retirement. And that's unfortunate. So now let's unretire Robert and let's have him retire. Uh, let's do 57. So let's not do 50. This has got to go into 59. Let's go to 57. So now we're going to retire two years later than we wanted to. We go back to assets. Now he's got a million dollars and there's our monthly contribution that came back in there. So that's the monthly contribution plus the company's 401k. So that's going back into the plan. Let's make sure everything else is good. Save. Go back to retirement. And that only got him another three years, got him to 76. So again, we left travel at $5,000 per year. Um, let's adjust this though. I made that mistake because he's not going to travel till he's retired. So let's take that to 2024, save that. Now let's see what it does. So we're going to 77. So we're moving in the right direction. Here's the thing I want you to look at. As we're going through your financial EKG, as we're going through the software, we just want to be moving in the right direction. So 77 is still too early for me to say, yeah, you can retire at 57. Basically, you're out of money 
in 20 years. His rate of return needed to avoid this shortfall is 8.5%. That's way too high. You're not going to average 8.5% every year for the rest of your retirement. Remember, recession over a 30-year period, on average, a recession will happen about six times. So at least in a 30-year retirement, you're going to have six recessions. You're going to have six possible stock market crashes, which is called sequence of return risk, meaning you're in retirement, the market crashes, and you lose your retirement assets. So the, the asset that you're taking retirement income out of has gone down. So instead of taking 4%, out of your assets for retirement income. Now you're taking eight and nine percent because the market is crashing. So we need a plan for the sequence of return risk. So we look at Robert and I say, hey Robert, we gotta work a little bit longer. So let's go to 2026. So let's say at 59 years old, you decide to retire. Everything else being equal. We go back to retirement and we've got him to 84. We're moving closer, right? Mortality tables show that males are passing away somewhere between 82 and 84. Now, I'm not God, and I'm not Robert's body, and I don't know when he's gonna die, but I'd like to continue to move this a little bit farther. So at 59, he could retire, and essentially, he would have a pretty safe retirement. But what happens if he gets to 84, and he's out of money? Well, at that point, because he does have this house, look at this. He'd have a $774,000 house. He's single, no kids. He could do a reverse mortgage. He could pull some equity out of that house. That would add some cash, as long as he's gonna stay in the house, or he could sell it. So I feel a lot better about him working to 59 and having some more options for his retirement. Let's go one more time. Let's take it up to 62. Let's go to 62, so that'd be 29, right? Yeah, let's go to 62. I don't wanna change Social Security. And the reason I don't want to change Social Security is because Robert's single. And if you're a single individual out there, it is so important for you to understand the optimal age and the optimal strategy for you to take Social Security because your retirement is on me, myself, and I. And so if Social Security is your only form of guaranteed income, the only form of increasing guaranteed income, it's really important we make the right decision when we claim. And so for Robert, I want to get it to as high as he can for his retirement income plan. So let's keep that at 67. Even if that means he has to work a little longer, we go to retirement now, boom, we're at 94 years old. So 94, I feel really, really comfortable about this plan. So for Robert, asking the question, can I retire at 55 with a million dollars? No, you cannot. But you can retire at 62 with $1.2 million saved for retirement. So I hope this has helped you in your retirement scenarios Thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.